Welcome, everybody, to First Monday Music Portland for March 2021. And the weird thing, I keep thinking of a snake that eats its tail, because hasn't it been March for the last 12 months? I mean, so what's new? March 1st, who cares? Um, anyway, I'm Mara McLaughlin. I'm uh, ED of Music Portland, uh, the local advocacy group for music businesses in our city, as well as professional musicians. Um, we are so jazzed to have released uh, last week the first section of our Portland area music business directory to specifically about the makers, the sellers, and the fixers of instrument and gear in greater Portland. Um, and we've had this stuff totally on our brain. So we're really excited tonight to get to be able to, to dig in and look at the, uh, at the inner workings of some of the businesses that we list in this directory. Um, so we'll be getting to them very quickly, but actually Austin is gonna first, for those of you that haven't seen the directory yet, um, we've got a super short little video that sort of demos it. So Austin is going to run, run the video. So the instrument gear directory is the first section we're doing, as I say, and it is, it's got premium directory listings, which are these that you see with the, um, the pictures and then they're basic directory listings. So you get a basic listing. If you just create a profile, just raise your hand and say, I am a music business in Portland. That's all it takes. If you want to look awesome, like some of these other guys, we'll tell you how in a minute. You can see there are ways to sort. You can sort on specific gear. And then it's gonna go and zero into what you're looking for. Once you go into a premium listing, it's got extended information. It's got videos, it's got multiple product shots. It's got all kinds of great stuff. For each of the different sections, we're gonna try and really craft a listing format that is suited to that part of our industry. So this is what worked great for um, the instrument and gear makers, because you know whether you're selling things or you've got beautiful things you fixed um, or you manufacture stuff, it's important to see the visuals. So at our last gear fest, I heard from a, a really surprising number of people who said they had no idea that there were so many um, manufacturers in the area. Now, we only had 25 manufacturers of more than 100 local instrument and gear businesses. And lots of these deeply embedded music professionals didn't know about them. So it definitely points out that if locals don't know this stuff, how many people from far afield can ever know about our rich music bounty? Now, that's really the reason that we've created this directory. So there are industry directories for everything. Every other industry has already acknowledged that directories work. Um, they boost your reputation by communicating the seriousness of your business and you're part of an association of professionals um, in the field. And Music Portland is a trade association. And I love the fact that associations really are just about associating people. We are, we are choosing the company that we keep and it's never been assembled before, but it means that people in your trade are aligned with you and it matters to buyers. We also know it's hard to cast an effective net in on, online marketing. Um, I mean, what are, you, what are you trying to reach? Everyone in the world that wants your stuff, people of an age, people who love accordions, full disclosure. Um, you've got to do it, but you're missing a lot of low hanging fruit if you're not focusing on buyers in your area or your state or your region. So one additional advantage of listing in the directory is that as a respected third party site presenting your URL, it's gonna boost your SEO. So every, all the things that happen for everybody collectively are gonna make things easier for you in your own online marketing. So, and it obviously it improves local visibility. During COVID, everybody's either wanting to upgrade their gear or build a little studio in their basement or finally learn to play the ukulele. We've heard from a lot of instrument gear folks that you know, business is actually pretty good because people are trapped at home with disposable income they're not spending out in the world. So that's great news. And we definitely hope to hear from the folks we're talking to how things have been going for them. Um, Portlanders and Oregonians love to buy local. And as a town of mostly boutique artisan manufacturers and skilled luthiers and 
owner operated retailers who curate their offerings. Um, discoverability is important. Um, and our directory is a way to reach that market that you're trying to reach. So we're so excited to have the directory as the first step in Music Portland's mission to amplify our local music ecology. ecology. We need to boost awareness um, and demand from local buyers and to validate to policymakers that we are many, we are serious, and we deserve the same advantages afforded to other local industries. And so we ask that you tell all your instrument gear buddies, all your peers to get on board, make sure that they make a profile for a basic listing, and we'll be rolling out new directory sections in the months to come. Um, I can have Austin drop in uh, musicportland.org forward slash join is the link to get in, to make a profile, to become a business listing. Um, because everybody wants one of those groovy business listings. And to get a business listing, you need to be a Music Portland business member. Um, you wanna make your business look awesome. You wanna to represent to customers that you support the music ecology and the work that's being done to make it truly great, more just and more sustainable for all music professionals. So we have been promoting that through January and February, you can get $100 off your annual membership, business membership. So instead of 250, it's 150. For a special deal, we're gonna make sure that tonight only, March 1st, we're gonna keep it open. That discount's gonna be open until midnight. So I'm selling Ginsu knives here, but um, we really appreciate the support and everybody that you're seeing here is already on the team. So we love them. Um, so we're gonna hear now from Jason Rogers of JMR Guitar, Eddie Wang of Eddie Wang Instruments, Maliki Graham of Ear Trumpet Labs, and Todd Milet of Portland Fretworks. And afterwards, there's gonna be an after party. We're gonna hang out. We're gonna raffle off a cool thing. And um, so watch for the link at the end of the hour and uh, come and hang with us. So I'm gonna pass it over now to our first tour, very excited, to Jason Rogers of JMAR Guitar. Hi there, everybody. I am Jason Rogers, JMR Guitars. And um, I, I do want to explain the uh, the name. Uh, it is JMR. Um, it is my initials, Jason Michael Rogers. It's, it's sometimes, maybe it wasn't the best uh, um, um, logo and, and name for a company because people call it JMR all the time, but it's close enough. But it's, it's my initials spelled phonetically. Um, you want to do a shop tour? Here we go. Ready? Woo! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I've got a really small shop here. This is this is an 11 by 8 room that I partitioned off in my garage. I mean, I'm serious. Like, like there's the car out there, you know. Um, but uh, you know, 88 square feet, and as you can see, I also pack it to the ceiling. So let's go cubic feet, 700 or something like that. Um, I have I have a couple main walls here. This is this wall is my main uh, tool wall uh, cabinet hand tools. Uh, this is my main workbench here. And this um, in particular, got this end vice that opens up and almost everything fits in here. Um, I've got all sorts of jigs and fixtures and everything. Everything starts right here. Over in the corner, I've got my, my woods. Um, I, I build with only local woods from, uh, from Oregon, if I can, Pacific Northwest, and definitely only um, US domestic woods, nothing exotic, nothing outside of the United States. Um, that's good for a, um, you know, ecological standpoint, um, you know, sustainable use of materials, but also good for uh, if your guitar needs to go across borders, there are no uh, um, CITES uh, regulations that might um, result in the seizure of your instrument. Um, this wall's got some of the heavy lifting tools here, got big old bandsaw, big old drill press. And then there's a lot of other kind of small tools, bench top type tools that are kind of hiding. Um, I've got a, a drum sander down there. Um, I've got over here, under here, I've got a, a disc sander on a pullout drawer that flips over and there's a, a bench jointer under there. Um, my, my, my table saw is on a, on a, on a cart right there. Um, uh, Oscillating spindle sander. I've got you know lots and lots of other tools and stuff hidden underneath here. There's also stuff like kind of hidden under the benches as well on this side. 
have a vacuum um, veneering system that's hooked up underneath there. The pump is underneath. Um, under here, I've got you know uh, clamps that are part of the bench for clamping neck uh, neck blanks and things. Um, obviously, back here on this wall, lots and lots of templates. Most of my my work is with uh, with templates and routers. So every every body part is is uh, represented in um, a template up there. Um, also, you know, necks and headstocks and uh, pit guard and all that kind of stuff. Um, hanging from the ceiling, I've got a, some tools as well. Neck jig up here. Got a uh, long um, belt sander right here for doing fingerboards. I've got uh, another um, fixture here for gluing down fretboards. Um, there's just, it's the stuff everywhere. Um, on this wall, this is where a lot of finishing this stuff is, you know, stereo over in this corner, lots of sandpaper. Um, apparently I also keep my, um, my uh, program notes here as well. Um, but you know, this is, a, this is a pretty chock full kind of space. You're probably getting sick, so I'll put you down here. Um, so I've been doing this since uh, 2017. This is actually a, a small side business for me. In my day job, I am a middle school a uh, band and choir teacher um, where I've been, I've been teaching in Woodburn for the last 20 years. Um, I started studying guitar building probably about the same time that I started teaching in uh, 99, 2000 or so. And uh, I, got, I got interested because I wanted to build a guitar that I couldn't afford, which as every luthier knows that that does not work out, that is not pencil out. I wanted a, I wanted a a jazz guitar, uh, an, an ES-335. Um, still haven't built that guitar, but um, maybe someday. Um, I started making sawdust in about 2008. I finished my first guitar in 2014. And like I said, I became a small business in 2017. You might have seen in my, um, my description that I build electric guitars. And uh, specifically, I, I have a very, very specific niche of what's known as multi-scale and extended range. And uh, here's a guitar that is a very good example of both. So the multi-scale, people look at the frets and like, what's wrong with the frets? They're all tilty. This is what's going on here. Um, the multi-scale, the idea is that you are giving each string its own, um, its own scale length. And specifically, you're going longer. So the, the simple the explanation is you look inside a piano, you look at a harp, and the high strings are short. The low strings are long, and it is a uh, it is an attempt to optimize uh, the pitch that you're trying to get from the string, the the material thickness, and the tension, and you're trying to balance and optimize all of that. And when you do that, you get the best tone out of the instrument. So, multi scale works really well um, by by usually giving a little bit more length to the low end. This is an eight string, so it's also extended range. So I build six string guitars plus seven string, eight string guitars. I build four string basses plus five string, six string basses. The extended range usually means you're going lower. Um, so this eight string, you know, goes down standard tuning, but then down to a B and then down to like a drop E. And the fact that this has the extended range multi-scale, so it's long scale, this low E just sounds fat and tight and it's awesome. Um, I build three, uh, three models, three designs. Um, they're all named after very important women in my life. So this is the Iris model. This was my uh, my mother's mom, uh, my maternal grandmother. Um, I have one named after my dad's mom. So this is a bass, five string bass built on the Alma model, more of a single cutaway kind of thing. Uh, I also can do some chambering and sound holes on this. Um, and then most recently, guitar named after my wife. This is the, the Jesse Lynn. This is a headless model. Um, this one in particular is heading off to New York in a couple months. Uh, it's eight string, um, super lightweight, ultra chambered, you know, two tone top, um, lots of comfy scallops on the back back for just sinking into your body and you know it's a gent machine um, so that's what that's what that's all about um you know i i mentioned woods um only local woods you know the, the stuff that you see here is all from oregon or southwest washington 
Uh, the fingerboard on this base was actually from a honey locust that my neighbor cut down, so that's super local. Um, I, I, um, I, do, I do have some, some friends who are, are good with uh, the CNC. Um, I, I don't do any CNC myself, but uh, I, have, I have some smart friends like my friend John Songson, whose day job is a, um, is a CNC operator. So he helped me design and machine uh, these proprietary bridges that are on these here. Uh, Multi-scale hardware is, is sometimes expensive and kind of hard to come by for the specific um, kind of layout that you want. So I had, I had a mate for what I wanted. Um, you know, the, the Pacific Northwest here is, is a pretty amazing place for, for, uh, for Luth 3, as Marilyn was saying just a little while ago. Um, if you don't know, if you make a triangle between Portland, Eugene, and Bend, it's pretty much one of the best and most active Luthery communities in the nation and in the world. And if you drew a straight line from, uh, from Seattle and maybe even up, down, up to Vancouver and down to Eugene, we're talking about definitely one of the, uh, the best Luthery communities in the world. Um, I owe a lot to a lot of uh, people locally here. Um, you know, uh, David King builds bases. Uh, uh, Mike Doolin, who used to build um, flat top and arch top guitars. Uh, Clayton Pledger, amazing um, flat top guitar builder. Um, my friend Paul Roney, with whom I uh, co-hosted a podcast for a while. Um, I've been the uh, the recipient of a lot of a uh, lot of help and a lot of kindness, and so I am happy to be here tonight and uh, passing some of that along to you. And I hope uh, we can do some breakout rooms, and I'm happy to answer any questions about anything we got right here. So I talked a lot and fast, and that is the end of my time. So on to you, Eddie Wang. Hey. Am I on? Sweet. Um, well, thanks, thanks, Jason. Well, compared to uh, Jamar, I want to start out here. Um, I'm living in luxury because I get a whole one car garage to work in. Uh, 10 by 20. Look at this. It's huge. Um, living, living a good life here. Um, walking in. Let's close the garage real quick. So, um, kind of like Jason, I started out. Um, Similarly, I started out building amps the same time I started teaching, which was about 20 years ago. Um, 20 years ago, I started building guitar amps, and I was a teacher, a science teacher in high school. Uh, and then I retired a few years ago, or a couple of years ago, and I started building amps completely. So this is my full-time job. Um, so just, uh, I'd like to kind of split my workshop here uh, department. So I'm going to start you off with the electronics department, right? So here we are. Um, this is kind of where uh, the, the, I guess I make stuff. Um, we have like, uh, you know, all the parts. And then here's, uh, if you want to look inside one that's almost done there. And um, one of the things that um, I guess kind of makes, hopefully what I think makes my amp special is that I'm really picky about all the parts and things that go into it. You know, for example, like, um, you don't see many people get really giddy when they get little wire in the mail uh but i i uh yeah i freak out about this stuff this is like pure copper wire pretty much like super pure copper wire with uh um, cotton insulation and then like it took me about three years of experimenting and i like found this like um um company that makes resistors kind of like the way they used to so carbon resistors i kind of go into all my amps um and again hand wired uh everything so even like you know, uh, this, this copper wire goes in, you know, anything that carries your signal goes through this. Everything else I use like really tough mil spec stuff, wire that should last forever. And even this stuff, like uh, my speaker cables, I wire with this stuff that's like made by Marshall like 20 years ago. They don't make them anymore, but like this just sounds awesome. So uh, I use those to make my speaker cables and I don't know how much I have left that I can, uh, can make. So we'll use that up. Um, yeah, next up, um, so this kind of, yeah, kind of where the magic happens and, you know, look at the, where I smoke up, I mean, uh, breathe up a lot of fumes of solder. And um, let's see, uh, over on the other side here, uh, this is kind of the, the, what I call the wood shop. Now, because of the one car garage, everything has to do kind of double duty. 
So like here is like kind of where I finish the calves, but it's also why, where I kind of um, uh, route the finger joints. So it's all solid finger joints. And like I store, you know, down here is like where the, the, the um, template for the finger joint routing it. Uh, can't talk this is too late. Um, routing finger joints down there. Uh, over here, you know, I can build, I build like turrets, turret boards. I use like really thick uh, G10 boards here that should last forever. You know, and then it's my drill press, right? You know, I do like sanding and uh, drum sanding and all that stuff. Um, yeah, and then, you know, yeah, everything. This is uh, where all the clamps for uh, putting together the, the cabs. Uh, by the way, someone asked if uh, what new colors are coming out this year. Um, I have this new color, um, which is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's uh, kind of like a metallic black with seafoam green uh, with a gold grill claw. You can also get it with the original uh, blue if you want. Great. Uh, let's move on to the next part. So now this is kind of like where a lot of the magic happens. Um, I invested a while ago in a wonderful CNC machine. Um, and as you can see, this is kind of the wonderful thing about a CNC machine is I can build every cab exactly the same and, you know, kind of do kind of cool, funky shapes. So a little preview of a funky shape. I got this amp that's coming out soon. Um, some people have, uh, I've, I've mentioned a little bit of details about this one, uh, but it's not quite ready. It will be, it's a little bit of higher power than um, what I typically uh, use. Um, but yeah, so here's the CNC. I have my uh, assistant, aka my daughter, um, Naomi here, and she, I don't know, she sometimes helps me, you know, little fingers help getting stuff. And before you accuse me of child labor, I do pay her really well. So you see, I give her money. Here you go, sweetie, for helping me out. Yep. She, she doesn't know it's not real. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so Naomi, you want to demonstrate and move around the CNC? Trying to get her to uh, teach her random stuff here and there about uh, the shop, but I don't think she can figure it out. <laughs> I think it turned off. Too. Um, here's here's the what I call the office where my daughter is occupying currently, and I can show you really quick. Here's like where I program um, the CNC. Here's the diagram for the baffle for that new amp that I'm making, and it's wonderful because I can you know, program where all the holes go specific, you know, very accurately. And so, you know, there's, this saves a lot of time. And also I don't need a full wood shop because uh, honestly, um, I'm not Jason. I can't fit a whole wood shop in a one car garage. Um, yeah. And then just kind of a little preview. My favorite department here is the, the Q and A or QC department where I get to test each amp for about five to 10 hours, hopefully 10. Um, you know, here's my toys up there. I think all of them I made myself. Um, so I, I do a little bit of guitar work on the side uh, just for, you know, mostly for fun. I do uh, some custom orders. And then, you know, other things like, um, you know, I like to, to, to buy things as local as possible. My chassis are all made here locally uh, by Metafab out in Hillsboro. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully you got good tour um yeah it's just uh i kind of do this because um kind of like jason mentioned uh i 20 years ago you know i was gigging playing out a lot and i really like good you know quality stuff vintage boutique all that stuff but i couldn't really afford it on a starting teacher salary as you all know they pay us super well um so i just started making my own stuff and then um all my amps feature a voltage regulator as you can see, I don't know if you can see right here. So this, this volt knob basically turns your amps from, you know, this, the pulse start goes up to 20 watts and you can turn it all the way down to one quarter watt. So you can practice at home, you know, with your, your, your volume set on like, you know, I like it on uh, whatever that is, eight. Um, and, you know, turn it down and, and have your amp basically behave the exact same way. Um, I started doing that because when I was gigging, you know, as you know, stage volumes have gone way down since, the seventies when I was born <laughs> and uh, you know, you just can't really play as loud as you can. And um, so I, I, I started putting voltage regulars inside my amps. You know, if you take a vintage amp and you put something, you know, you mess with it, people look at you funny or, or you're shunned from every uh, gear page ever. But um, so I just started making my own and that's kind of how I started. But yeah. So 
um, that's it. If you have any questions, you know, you of course email or I guess we have, um, you can ask me afterwards. So I guess it's on to uh, Maliki of Ear Trumpet Labs, right? Yeah, so, I'm next. Oh, that is, right? this is so cool. <laughs> I'm just like loving seeing other people's faces and like finding out more. There's definitely some journey similarities. So we're a um, microphone workshop uh, in just off Sandy at like 20th. Um, and we hand build medium large diaphragm condenser mics. This company was started 10 years ago in my dad's garage. So I, he, it's like he was telling me how to use the CNC printer and now I run the business. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool to see how these things get started. Okay, so this is our Myrtle microphone. Um, they're all medium large diaphragm condensers and the capsule, I just went and grabbed one, but it looks like that. Um, we use Chinese made capsules, but everything else is built here, including the, um, the board on the inside. Those are all hand wired point to point. Um, that's been great take home work, but especially this year, it's very useful for people to have take home work. Here is the whole space. Um, we have four builders. Um, I run the business side, so I'm usually at home. It's very exciting to get to be in the workshop today. Um, let's see, where should we start? I'm gonna start with the metal work. Um, so this is metal work corner um, where the various components get built. We use a system where because we have four different builders all working together um, they take the these bins are labeled with the kinds of parts that we need and then people can grab the bin take it over to the metalwork area and then put the finished pieces here so we have things like head rings and face plates and uh, punched screens and the rings that we use. Um, we have a pretty weird supplier list because as we were getting started, um, Philip was making things out of a lot of found pieces. So you'll notice the ring for our suspended mics is a flan ring. We get this from like a French baking supplier. Um, <laughs> We were, our accountant told us to keep really good receipts because nobody's gonna believe how much expensive French cookware we need to buy for our microphone company. Um, we have all kinds of little springs and pieces. Um, and we, we definitely share Eddie's joy in like finding the right, finding the right supplier and getting things in stock. But I, I believe some of these are from like a model airplane supplier. Um, let's see. All right, so then once those pieces are built, oh, and then the T-ball, the suspended ball on some of them is a, a T-ball for loose leaf tea. Um, but they sound really good. They're really good sounding microphones. <laughs> and we have a lot of really, uh, really cool promotional artists. We had the Violent Femmes come in the workshop once. Um, uh, Elvis Costello uses one, Brandy Carlisle, a lot of really cool people. They're really popular in like folk, bluegrass, Americana. So over here is where people do final assembly. Um, they turn these chunks into microphones. And then let's see, I showed you the boards already, but here's a little peek. Some of the, some of the finished boards ready to go in there. Um, this is our packing and shipping station here. All of the foam is cut by hand with a razor blade, which is a probably impractical thing that we just continue to do because it's vaguely relaxing and fun. Um, here is where the models come to sit once they are all done and ready to be packed. Um, this is Myrtle, who I showed you before. Another popular model is Edwina, which has a pivoting head like that. They just take a uh, standard XLR out um, they require phantom power, like all condenser mics, and fit in like a standard mic clip. But before they come here, they have to get tested. So this is the, the QA area. Um, they burn in here. Um, that's a, we just run phantom power through them for at least 24 hours. The, the components will generally, if they're going to fail, fail within the first 24 hours. So we test that. Once that's done, we come and test them in our little test setup, which is a mini fridge filled with foam. So they come in here and we, <laughs> we run that 
to make sure they're not noisy um, and then do frequency sweeps here. Um, let's see. Oh, we do, uh, we make a weird model every year for April Fool's Day. They're always functional, um, but this is one from, from two years ago that's a very upsetting uh, binaural head that can actually hear out of its ears. Let's see. I'm trying to think what else I should show or what other models. Let's see. Um, all of our models have like old lady names. So that's our little list of models. Edwina, Delphina, Myrtle, Louise. Nadine is our mic for upright bass. Um, yeah, so um, this year uh, we have all been in here on a rotating schedule. So nobody from the same household is in at the same time. Um, and when we're in here, we're usually always wearing masks except for right now, so you can see my face. And we have a strong air filter that runs um, when people are uh, in between us, in between us being in here. Um, but I miss my coworkers. <laughs> and it's, uh, I spend all my time at home and wish I didn't. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to, did I go really fast? I went really fast. And go back to the go show you the metal stuff again. <laughs> they have much more compact, efficient areas with all these tools like on every surface. And ours is so big, it was easy to show you around fast. Let's see. We have oh, there's like a tub of uh, flan rings. Um, yeah, I feel like I missed things but here I am. <laughs> uh, let's see if there are no particular questions. I can ask questions at the end, but I can certainly my, Oh, my business area. Sure. Um, so the equivalent of where Eddie's daughter was sitting, uh, is here. Uh, this is where I do video editing. I do, um, packing and shipping. We have our little, our little label printer, which has been a little miracle. We have our kitchen area over here, um, a seating area, which up until this year was always threatened to get taken over with more tables for working. But since it's only ever one of us at a time, I get to keep my nice sitting area, even though nobody can hang out anymore. And then over here is the shelf for finished mics. So when we're packing and shipping, after we do our final QA test, we come over here grab a mic, pack it up, leave it outside the front door. And then that's the last corner you haven't seen is our big chalkboard. We have some pictures of artists that use our mics kicking around. This is the, uh, the cabinet of weird old former microphones and early models. Um, and I think that, that brings it around for me. Looks like Todd's hopping back in. Um, cool. So, uh, yeah, if, um, if Todd is ready, I can hand it over to, to Todd at Portland Fretworks, which is a great local establishment that fixed up this guitar. <laughs> Let's see. Todd, are you there? Oh dear. Well, what we could do maybe is if people have any questions um, that- Did he show up? No, he dropped off. I think he's coming back in. Um, so what I loved was the variety between the two first ones. Like, you know, not just, not just very, very small and pretty darn small, but like just the, the totally different approaches. Um, Eddie, what makes your, your amp special besides that, the knob business? <laughs> um, the, the knobs are good looking? They are super good looking. <laughs> I noticed that right away. Nicholas Downing yeah, they, says in the chat that they're the top tier best amps he's ever played, the only amp. Wow, thanks. There you go. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, uh, it's, I've, um, 
I guess as a musician, I'm kind of spoiled. You know, I, I, I like the nice stuff. I, I actually grew up playing cello um, since I was a little wee bitty boy. Um, and, you know, with cello, playing cello, the focus of like the first 10 years of playing is just about getting good tone. Um, so I've always been a tone snob just um, from that. And, you know, when I started guitar, you know, when I was also a little kid, um, you know, my focus was tone. And for some reason, um, you know, the vintage amps, the boutique amps, those were like, I, you know, I, I could tell a difference, you know, I, um, and I couldn't afford them. So yeah, I, I wanted to do that for myself. And then, you know, while I was teaching, I was, I was literally just taking um, amps that I liked. I sometimes I would copy it, but I do my own thing with it. But then I would like replace all the, you know, cause I, I get bored easily. Um, I replace all the parts. I tried different resistors, different wires. And, you know, I, you know, I don't know if it's placebo effect or whatnot, but I definitely could hear a difference at least in, in my head, you know, and that's all that matters. Um, is what's in my head. Um, and so, yeah, just 20 years of experimenting. And I think I came up with a formula that sounds really good um, to me. And um, if other people like it, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of, and then, you know, just the attention to detail um, is I use, you know, like different kinds of wire for specific parts, different types of, um, you know, resistors for, for, and even like, um, my capacitors here that I use tone caps, you know, these are um, Jupiter caps. They're made in, I think they moved recently to Arizona or something, but anyways, um, you know, they're hand wrapped and um, I, I like the way they sound uh, to me. They sound warmer than kind of the, the typical factory stuff. Um, and again, it all depends on how you use it's, it's, you know, how one part um, complements another part, you know, you could use completely different opposite parts that I use and still come up with great results. Um, so yeah, it's just that kind of attention to detail where you, you find the parts that kind of work together. Um, and then you, you, you once you find a good formula, you kind of, you know, run with it. And I think that's kind of, you know, and then, and then like, uh, again, like I said, I'm, I'm really spoiled in terms of, uh, or, or, or picky tone snob, like even the woods I pick, I mean, when I go wood shopping, I'm literally there in the shop, in this huge wood warehouse for like three hours and leafing through stacks of like 800 planks. And I tap all of them. I mean, people look at me like I'm psycho, but I'm like, uh, Hey, you know, that, that really rings out. And I'm like, I'm going to use that one. And so I, I even like stuff like that, you know, the way I construct it, you know, finger jointed really strong. Uh, other things like, for example, my cleats, um, a lot of people um, screw those in, you know, which it probably works great, but I, I glue them in because I think it's going to be stronger. Um, you know, even putting the Tolex on you, I mean, you can hear it you know, when I pick it up, it, it really, I don't know if you can hear it over Zoom, but it, it really has a ring to it. So even like little things like that, um, you know, that, that's what you get when you get, you know, handmade um, boutique stuff, you know, that, that, you know, instead of factory stuff, which, you know, it can be great as well. I'm not, not um, putting them down in any way, but, uh, you know, I, I think you get something special when you have someone who's like, like psychotic, like me. Uh, yeah. building it yeah does that <laughs> hopefully that answers your question oh no, that was I went a little long because I realized I didn't use my whole 10 minutes no, no um, yeah. we got more that, questions that's so cool that reminds me so much of uh yeah when when Philip was originally designing the mics or when he's the the screen shaping on them so like the shape that they kind of come out like that uh, originally was from a doorknob, but like just the right doorknob that he found. He spent hours at Hippo Hardware, like holding up doorknobs and wondering if it looked like a good shape for a microphone. <laughs> and so eventually, finally, we got a press for it in the right shape, but he had to like send in the doorknob to have the model wow. made from the doorknob. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Who would have thought a doorknob? <laughs> yeah, well, the microphone. That's, that, that's what I think, I think, Portland's brand, I think, in instrument and gear is innovation and this kind of quirky authenticity, you know, it's like problem solving. And it seems like that's what, how people sort of perceive us. And it isn't weird. We all hate weird, but um, it's just, yeah, it's just so cool to see how everybody solves these problems. I want to hear a weird, like, problem that Jason's solved or like no, some, some particular oddity. <laughs> So I, um, I forgot to mention it. I, I wind my own pickups and, um, oh geez, I'm going to break something. 
So this is my pickup winder. It is this wonderful yeah. piece of Rube Goldbergian uh, engineering. <laughs> but um, I, I started with I, I started doing this with my first guitar because because you know buying pickups. My first guitar, the pickups would have cost twice as much as, as all the other parts and materials. Um, so so I had I, I just decided I'm going to go down this rabbit hole because I'm I'm the kind of guy that goes down rabbit holes and. Um, and winding pickups, it's not rocket science, but it is a bit of science. And you do need to understand the relationship um, between um, the copper wire and the magnets and, uh, and the other construction and things like that. But, um, you know, I, everything, everything I build comes with a custom hand wound set of pickups. And so whether it is one of my, um, uh, my, my mid or lower um, models, um, what I call my oil and vinegar or my essential line, even though they kind of have a standard um, pickup, um, they're, they're still hand wound. Um, but you know, with, the, with the, the custom stuff, I mean, I'm able to talk to my customers and you know, ask them what kind of style of music that they play and kind of what they're going for. Um, you know, I, can, I can reverse engineer um, some of the commercial models that are out there. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. And, and the, and the, the, the responses that I've gotten from customers have been pretty good. Um, even, even with like, if I'm trying to like copy something, they're like, yep, you pretty much nailed that. So that's, um, th but I mean, this thing is, it's made out of a um, sewing machine. That was my wife's that died. Um, it's got a fishing reel on there. Um, it's got other bunch of random parts from Ace Hardware and it makes a racket when it winds and it's I'll sometimes bring it to guitar shows and, and plug it in and, and let people see it and people just marvel at like look at it spin look at it go but it's um it's a, it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to be able to have that kind of control over your sound from you know from obviously like Eddie's saying going to the wood, wood stores and selecting the wood I buy locally from you know Crosscut Hardwoods and Gobi Walnut and um, Gilmer Hardwoods all in in northwest Portland um, get stuff, you know, locally if I can. I've got the big bandsaw so I can resaw stuff if I get a big chunk that um, can, be, can be made into smaller pieces um, for the guitar parts and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's, it, there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of problem solving when you're working out of a small shop. That's amazing. So are, is there a theremin builder in town? Because, <laughs> you know, with your, know. <laughs> your cutting edge technology, I'm thinking if you make a bigger one, you could rock the theremin too, and you'd fully grab that whole like end of the spectrum market. You know, you're doing these crazy cool things. All right. Any other? Oh, see, now people are like, now everybody. Yeah, this is a lot of everybody wants this cool stuff. Any other questions from folks? I think um, Todd, Todd has been having connection problems and he seems to have dropped away. Um, which is too bad because we were going to get inside Portland Fretworks. I saw a little glimpse around. It was kind of cool. Yeah. Well, excellent. Any other funny stories to add before we we start moving into the after party? No, I think someone was asking uh, what kind of tubes I use. Mm. Um, I'll just answer that really quick. I use a combination of tongue sole and JJ, mostly tongue sole. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I, I, I used to, you know, I compared them to NOS tubes and, well, you know, they're the today production tubes are getting really good. I mean, you can't really tell the difference. Um, so yeah, that was, I saw that question up there. So I, I put that up there. I use JJ for the reverb channel just because it sounds good on reverb. Um, but tongue soles have this nice uh, texture in the mid range that I really dig. Any other final comments from folks before we want to pull over to the after party? No? All right, it's all good. Um, Austin, what? It put the link in the, uh, in the chat and put the link in the Facebook thread too for the, um, the after party connection. And then we're just gonna hang out. It's just gonna be, gonna be chilling. We hope everybody joins us. I know these guys have more stuff. I know that they've got little weird. We want the bizarre stuff. We want the uh, we want to know the odd stories because um, they're always those odd stories when you're in business for yourself. Um, and remember, everybody, if anybody's a business out there, 
join as a business member tonight and you get the same discount and you get that cool, cool listing. Um, but we're just so happy to have this incredible wealth of talent and, you know, the people that will convert garages into things or half of garages into things. Um, our garage is actually um, <clears throat> Model T garage. So it's probably a little bit bigger than Jason's. <laughs> um, so I don't know if we were to go more there, that would be the thing. All right. Uh, okay, Austin has put it in there. Um, it's meeting ID for those that do not have a chat. Eight, it's Zoom, 867-0736-5596, passcode PDX, all capitals. So come over and we wanna hear everybody's voices and let's, let's talk some more. Thank you everybody for your wonderful presentations and for just being awesome. So we'll talk to you in a bit. Everybody come on over to the after party.